Hi, I'm Allie, and this is my presentation over color modes. Some of the key points we'll be talking about is what colors are classified as, color harmonies, saturation, and the different formats for color in regards to design and printing. For the basic elements of color, we're going to talk about primary, secondary, tertiary, and tertiary colors. Ugh, we're already redoing this. Hi, my name's Allie and this is my presentation over color modes. Some of the key points we will be talking about is what colors are classified as, color harmonies, saturation, and the different formats for color in regards to design and printing. For the basic elements of color, we're going to talk about primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. There are three different primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. These are what every other color is made up of. Secondary colors are quite literally the second colors you can come up with by mixing two primaries together. Same as primary colors, there are also three secondary colors. Green, orange, and purple. If you are picturing a clock, the primary colors are placed four hours apart and form a triangle on the color wheel. The secondary colors will be at the same intervals but in an opposite triangle with green being directly across from red, orange directly across from blue, and purple across from yellow. These opposite pairs form complementary colors. Tertiary colors are the last of this group. Six colors form this group. I always think of the color wheel like a compass for a map. You have north, south, east, and west, which would be the primary colors. Northeast, southwest, and so on would be secondary, and tertiary would be north, northwest, south, southeast, and so on. The colors that make up tertiary are blue purple, red purple, red orange, orange yellow, yellow green, and blue green. Next up, we're going to talk about color pairing. There are tons of different ways to pair and match colors, such as complementary, split complementary, analogous, triadic, and tetradic. Triads are a pairing of three different colors that are at the four hour intervals that form a triangle. Any colors that form this perfect triangle are triad colors. Analogous are quite the opposite. As you can see in the upper right image, Analogous colors are side-by-side -side colors in pairings of three or more colors. So, if you want the analogous colors for blue, you would get blue-green, blue, and blue-violet if you were to choose just three. Warm and cool colors are the last of what we're going to talk about regarding color pairing. With warm colors, I think of fire. All the different shades of red, orange, and yellow are warm like a fire would make you. Cool colors are the opposite of warm. They remind me of water and nature. Shades of blue, green, and purple make up cool colors. A saturated color, in the simplest terms, is a pure color. This means not a single shade of white, black, or gray is added. Oversaturated colors are known for looking fake because they do not happen naturally. When you desaturate a color or lower the saturation, the color will look paler and will make the color look closer to a tinted white or gray. You can also use different levels of saturation to convey mood. A desaturated dark color conveys a more serious one, whereas a light color that has been desaturated will give off a more friendly tone. Color formats are the different ways that you can utilize colors for your design. When using the RGB format, the colors are based off of red, green, and blue, and it is subtractive. The RGB format is used for online designs and files. CMYK is what you find when you use physical printing, or when you physically print items, such as business cards, booklets, merchandise, and tons of other things. CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and key, which is simply another word for black. CMYK is additive, which means it adds layers on top 
layers of each color to create the final colors. If you look at the images I have provided on the screen, the top two are what the different color wheels look like in RGB versus CMYK, which really shows why it is important to make sure when creating a design, you know what the end product will be used for. Lucky for us, we can now create designs in CMYK, so that way we can design exactly how it will print and not be surprised by how it prints out. When it comes to finishing a design, whether it be online or for printing, there are many factors. Two other ways to help choose colors are by using spot color or hexadecimal codes. Spot colors are shown in the top image as a way to print a design, but instead of using a mix of all the colors, it uses a single color ink to print, de print the design. Depending on the circumstances, this can be a cheaper way to print designs. Hexadecimal is not really a way to print a design, but instead of using a mix, oops, it's not, it's not a way to print using ink. It's a six figure code made up of letters and or numbers that give you a specific color. When used in branding guides, this can give you the exact color so you don't use a slightly different color and print design or imprint or design a slightly off piece. You can see here in the bottom image, they gave you some of the most basic colors and they gave you the hexadecimals for them in this image. And you'll use these in branding guides. So for like Baylor and Waco, they're gonna have a very specific green and yellow hexadecimal code that they'll send off to printers in all the different departments. So that if they're getting designs or pamphlets printed, then that's what they'll use. And thank you so much for watching my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it.